Hey everyone, John Grimsmo here bringing you another Knife Making Tuesday. This time we're going to talk about the lathe and I have been talking with two of my close friends in this industry. Um, should I mention their names? I don't know, I won't mention their names. But they're guys that a lot of you will probably know and follow and all that. And they have similar, no, they have, they have this lathe, they have the Tormac lathe. And they both, in the past two or three days, have come up to me with this exact same question. And I'm like, it's like I know the answer because it was obvious to me, but it wasn't obvious to them. So I want to share with you guys how I set up the lathe from a cold start because my two good friends uh, didn't realize that, that you could do this. Maybe it didn't just click in their brains that this is the way to do it, um, whereas it, it did in my brain. So, okay, let's check it out. I have the Tormax Land Pro lathe. I have a gang set up with tools right here. Um, which means all of my tools are like rigidly mounted to the table. They're all equally spaced apart. The other guys have the turret, which rotates around. You have the eight tools there. Um, I don't have one of those yet, but one day I'll probably get one because I, I like the thought of it. Um, so I just started this lathe up. All I did was turn on the computer. I haven't homed it or anything. Um, and I'm going to show you how I do that. So, this, I'm not going to cut this video or edit it or anything. Right. Got to turn this guy on, this guy on. Yeah, I just, this is going to be a quick and dirty video. Um, Pathpilot's been pretty rock solid. Let's see, I don't like how that's on. I wish I had a touch screen. Break, and I don't like how this is always at 40%, but whatever. That's a little thing. Um... So, yeah, reference Z first, and it just uh, takes about an hour for it to go back. It's only going 45 inches a minute, whatever. So we'll do X, Z first, and then X, and then we'll bring it back to in. I've got a part here that I failed yesterday, so i got to cut that off. Um, and then we'll do X. And there we go. Bring the Z in. Okay, so from a cold start, my friends were saying that... Almost there, almost there, almost there... Okay. They were saying that they couldn't hold a tolerance because they would have to keep re-zeroing every single tool, and it takes a long time, you know, a considerable amount of time to do that. Um, and I'm thinking that I don't have to do that, because it... Anyway, I'll show you. So... Yeah, I can do that here. So I'm making a pivot here. This is 17.4 um, pH stainless steel. And all I'm going to do is take a known tool, any one, any diameter cutting tool that is fixed, and I know it's been zeroed yesterday or the day before or whatever, and uh, like you can't do this with a tool that you just put in today. It doesn't work. So, like this turning tool, or this um, grooving tool, or that one, or that one, whatever. I'm going to choose this one, because I know it holds a good tolerance, it's got a sharp insert in it. And then all I'm going to do is, okay, that's tool 15. So I go over here and I type in T15, enter, brings up tool 15 right there. So then I take it down in X, take it close to the part, X, and close. Now it's maybe a little low, right there. Um, that, well, that is actually the exact diameter that it's supposed to be. Coincidentally, it was totally random. Um, however, the limit switches that Tormac is using, no offense to Tormac, but they are not very accurate. Um, so homing the machine, I mean, one, one day I measured it, and I had uh, the homing switch was within two tenths of being accurate, and then another day it's two thou, which is an enormous difference, and that's not very good. Um, Z doesn't really matter, I don't care about Z accuracy, because you always leave like five or ten or twenty thou on the the length of it, and you cut that off, and you start from there. X is critical for what I do. I want this pivot to be one eight six seven, not one eight six eight. That is zero point one eight six seven. Um, one the seven is one ten thousandth of an inch the accuracy in that so and I, I want that exact number every single time plus or minus like one or two maybe 
you know, 1865 to 1869 is uh, my absolute max. I don't want to see that though. I want to see everyone coming off 1867. So, okay, so I home the machine. All I'm going to do is a diameter cut with my one known tool, with tool 15. So let's let's do that. I'm going to set um, just a random. I always do 1500 RPM. It's that's a tool that needs to spin backwards, so I have to go reverse. Spinning. And then I'm gonna take the X down a little bit and then just do a cut. I'm going slow because this is a quote unquote finish cut. Now here's where it gets tricky. I'm gonna, I stop the movement, except right now it's rubbing the insert, and I don't like that. Um, it, you know, it's, it's bad for the insert to do what I'm doing right now. I think, this is all theory. Um, so stop the spindle. So I don't like to dwell the tool there because, I don't know, it's just, in my mind it sounds like a bad idea. So sometimes I'll jog it over, um, and I'll quickly look, look over here, and see I'm at 1725 and then as I'm jogging I'll go over and then I'll move it up just to clearance it and then wrap it back and then I have to know to move it back down to 1875 or 1725 to whatever this was for my cut so does that make sense I'm like I'm doing my test cut and then I clearance it move it and then back to the same diameter as the test cut you could go forward and then stop the spindle and drag it back, but that's dragging it against the part. It's putting a score in your part, um, and it's dragging the, the insert, not very good thing, um, but also not the end of the world. So that's why I like to move up so that I'm not dwelling it on the part. Um, this is all nitpicky stuff, you figure out your own method. Critical thing is, right now I cut that, I cut it at 1725, I'm gonna move it up, I'm going to move it over a whole bunch, enough to clearance my micrometer. And then I'm going to move, move it back down to 1725. Okay. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to take my... I got these new beautiful Mitutoyu digital calipers, digital um, micrometer. I've been using these ones um, for a while. Shars. These ones are about 45 or $50, and this one was, gosh, I can't even remember, but $150, $200 or something like that. Um, considerably heavier from the, for the Mitutoyo one in, in weight and mass and all that. But if you're on a budget, guys, don't overthink it. This is a lot of money to spend on a tool. This is almost no money, $45, and the precision is there. I measure the exact same part, and this measures two, th or two tenths smaller, but it's consistent. You know, if you measure a range of parts with this, the same range of parts will be similar with this, just two tenths different. So these are a very good tool. Um, this is obviously better, but if you're on a budget, that's great. It's just like with calipers. You know, I've, I've literally had this set of electronic calipers that I got from uh, Harbor Freight for $20. I've had this for 10 years and they go through batteries faster, but um, they are great. And then we recently got, I just saw it, Mitutoyu Cool and Proof um, calipers, and they're great too, they're, they're sturdier, um, they're a bit stronger and, and just more precise, like rigidity wise, but I still use them both. Um, in my eyes now, this is a rough estimate tool and then the the mic is the uh, accurate tool. So yeah, I'm, I'm saying for all you guys that are kind of young and you don't have to be young, but I'm, I'm saying like low budget and don't want to invest a lot of money in this. Don't waste all your money on super fancy tools that you don't you're not utilizing the precision of, right? Anyway, where were we? We're gonna use the Mitutoyo one because I like it and I paid a lot of money for it, so I want to use it. Um. Like I said, I'm not going to cut this video, so I just want to... Eric took all my camera equipment, so I can't do too much. And I don't want to edit, because I'm lazy. I'm busy, let's, let's put it that way. So, anyway, I'll do this, and then I'll bring you in. Alright. 
so this is hard with with one hand on film but I'm measuring this like I said one hand on film this is awkward but I'm measuring 16845 okay and you do it a couple times you make sure to click it properly there was 35 30 1684 let's just call it 1684 cuz cuz I'm not measuring it properly here while holding the camera fine 16835 so that is my test cut. The tool is still at the X position of my, where my test cut was. Right, 1725, what did I just say? 18, I can't even remember, because I'm talking. 16835? Yeah, 16835. Which is quite a bit different than 172. That looks like four thousandths of an inch. So, here's the difference, guys. My friends that I'm talking about, I, utmost respect for them, um, they just didn't know you could do this. Um, all it takes is I'm taking that measured diameter, I'm clicking on this thing, this XDRO. This is the, this is your actual position. No matter what tool you're in, if you switch to a different tool, this is going to say. A totally different number. I'm going to type in the measured dimension. Um, so point one six eight three five. I hope that's um, what I actually measured. And then I hit enter. Boom. Now all of the tools are offset by whatever that fourth hour was. This is like your your work coordinate system, your global everything. Um, what they were doing before is on the screen here. Uh, in the offsets page, so here's your offset table. These are my tool one, two, three, four, five, X and Z offsets, but mostly you work in here. You type tool 15, uh, you do the same thing. You do a skim cut, skim cut, and then you measure in here. So instead of typing it in here, they would have typed in 0.1863 and then touch X and then touch X, except all that does is change one tool all the other tools are still off from your your home switches, um, your limit switches. So that's not the way to do it in the morning when you're starting up the machine. Once, so every morning I will do this and I will do a skim cut and measure it and I'm running out of battery. Um, and then that's, that's it. The machine is zeroed right now. If I make a cut with any other tool, they'll be within one tenth or two, which is awesome. Um, and that's, that's about all there is to it. As far as setting tools, it's the same thing, except, so now that I've formed the machine and cut it properly, setting a tool will be the same process, except I'm typing, it, typing the measure diameter in there, hitting touch X, and then going. Um, that's really all there is to it. But you don't have to set all your tools every day, all the time, because that's just a waste of time, and time is very precious. Um, so... That's what I do in the morning. That's probably a 10-15 minute video on a process that takes me about two minutes. But explaining the whole process and lets you guys figure out what's going on. Um, should we max out this battery and see how long? I, I'm going to cut out sometime. But uh, you don't care. Um, I've been making pivots. 17.4 17-4 pH is a fantastic material to machine. Um, insanely shiny, like crazy good, crazy shiny. And I'm making these, all the prototype ones that I've made, I'm able to dial in one-tenth of a tolerance, which is fantastic. In production, if I make a hundred of them, then I, I can't assume that the run is going to stay at one tenth tolerance, so maybe I'll make them ten at a time or whatever and dial in the tolerance from there, but it's working pretty good. Um, I need to take some time and set up some lathe videos because this explanation is, a, is an easy one, but some people are missing it, and a lot of people have the Tormac lathe, and it's, it's a great machine. Um, I'm certainly using mine a lot. <clears throat> so, anything I can do to kind of help these little quick and dirty fixes, maybe next time not take 15 minutes to explain a two-minute process, but 
whatever. I haven't filmed much in a while, so I'm on a rant kind of mode. So, anyway. Uh, that's it. Um, trying to do a video a day for, the, for this week, and uh, this is my contribution to that. So, alright. Thanks for watching. I got work to do. Catch you next time. Thanks. Bye.